The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom it's hit the gaming world with a bang, selling like hotcakes and gaining universal praise from critics and gamers alike. There's no doubt, it's got all the open world adventure, engaging mechanics, puzzles, combat and creative muscle that anyone could possibly want out of a game. Now, here at Gamesmiths, we've been all about the build up for this particular title for over two years now, and I'm playing the game as we speak, in fact, my whole family is. So I thought it'd be a cool way to start my Tears of the Kingdom video series with a baseline 101 of sorts, something that would welcome new players into the fold with some essential tips. And if you're experienced, don't worry. We've got some bonus tips at the end and some info on something else. Could pique your interest, so hang in for that. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Number one, Nintendo definitely has you covered. It's always worthwhile checking out game specific details coming from the big end themselves. It's official, informative to the point. It's generally engaging. Whether it be reading the in-game booklets from way back in the NES days to the blogs that you see out on Switch today, Nintendo always gives you enough details to be useful. Not too much as to spoil your appetite if you follow me. There are quite a few resources out there, but I'll call out a few particularly. First of all, definitely check out the news section on your Switch. It's often a great place for any new information that might be coming to hand, and here you'll find the latest info direct from Nintendo themselves, even well after this video is published. From new events, tips and tricks, story trailers, and maybe even potential DLC information, this is the best place to make sure you're across what's happening in the world of Zelda. A great example includes their current series of tips and tricks. There's three parts out so far and I'll include links in the description in case you want to check it out, but essentially part one is some overall general pointers. Part two has a focus on describing the key abilities or powers that Link has in the game. And part three hones in on what they call surface level tips. It's kind of a cool nondescript way of providing pointers for those outside of the opening hours of the game and much more into the wider world. While I'm covering the big end and resources, I'll also make sure to include links, pun intended this time, to the official Zelda websites, both English and Japanese. These sites include a lot of basic information, like descriptions on characters and items, as well as news and events of course, but there's also extra details about past Zelda titles, lore, chronology and timelines. It's a great starting point for those wanting to know more about what you see in the game, but not over the top or bogged down in tiny detail. So why include the Japanese website, you might ask? Well, simply put, it's got some different information and I find it to be a little bit more comprehensive than the Western sites we've got access to. A quick tip here though is to try and make sure that the browser you're using has a translation feature unless you speak fluent Japanese. Something like Google Chrome is always a good way to go. And if not, well, maybe it's a good time to brush up on your Japanese. Tip number two, have you got FOMO? Well, here's what you need to know. The Legend of Zelda series has existed for over 35 years and it can be a little overwhelming for new players coming into the series. Worried they don't know the history of the other games or perhaps key story moments in chronology could impact their experience, but to put your mind at ease, don't worry too much about it. Each adventure stands on its own merits and the details are there for those who want to delve further, but it's not necessary for you to enjoy the game to its fullest. The basics of the series as a whole can be boiled down to a few key elements that form the secret of success when it comes to The Legend of Zelda. As the player, you take on the role of Link, the aptly named avatar that unites the player with the adventure that's happening in the land known as Hyrule. This land has its own fictional creation story and it surrounds three golden goddesses who created the land, those who live upon it, and the laws to which they are bound. As legends go, these golden goddesses left behind an almighty power called the Triforce. And this ancient relic grants the power to bend reality itself and acts as the primary motivation for the series antagonists, or bad guys if you will, those seeking the power and domination of Hyrule itself. The Triforce is comprised of three parts and they reflect three key virtues, power, wisdom and courage. And in the majority of Zelda games these virtues are characterised by three primary individuals who embody the virtues holistically. First of all, there's the titular Zelda character. That's the princess with the bloodline of the goddess. She embodies the virtue of wisdom. Power is characterized by Ganon, or one of his various incarnations of malice and hatred, depending on the title. And finally, you have yourself as the player Link, who embodies the spirit of courage. On an adventure destined to save the land of Hyrule, it does indeed take courage to start the game and try and see it through to the end. Although the series is interconnected by compendiums of timelines, lore, chronology and tales of myth and legends longer than documents can tome, the same theories tend to recur and they involve these primary characters, the ancient relics capable of great power, and of course the push and pull between good and evil, 
ultimately deciding the fate of the land and its people, with you at the heart of the adventure and the experience. In Breath of the Wild, the title before Tears of the Kingdom, Link was tasked with recovering his memories and the story of a calamity that caused untold destruction to Hyrule a hundred years in the past. Link is compelled forward by Zelda, who calls on him to help save Hyrule from a greater calamity that she now holds at bay in the Royal Palace, Calamity Ganon. And through this, Link learns the fate of other key characters called Champions, who represented other races in Hyrule, helping to oppose the Calamity in the past. In doing so, he gains new abilities and powers through overcoming challenges to help best the Calamity and free Zelda from the Malice Beast. Tears of the Kingdom picks up after the defeat of the Calamity, as the hero Link and Princess Zelda go to investigate beneath Hyrule Castle itself. Upon encountering a mysterious castle floats into the air, mysterious relics descend from the sky, and something strange happens to Princess Zelda. What we have here is an upheaval of sorts that struck the land of Hyrule, and now Link once again must throw himself into an adventure in search of clues to save Hyrule and help find Zelda. Suffice to say, there's plenty of detail for those wanting to know more. That should do for you to start your adventure. Tip 3. Heads up. The in-game display and menus might seem trivial, but I guarantee most will be surprised by something new here. First of all, in terms of the heart, health is represented by hearts in the top left of the screen. Any actions requiring Link to exert effort such as climbing will use a resource called Stamina, which is shown by a green circular icon on the screen, which depletes as it's used. Both of these elements can be upgraded throughout the game. In the lower right corner, you've got the handy minimap, which will show your location including coordinates on three axes. You've got the X, Y, and Z axes representing latitude, longitude, and the Z axes representing the verticality, or the sky islands that feature in the game. Around the minimap, you'll also notice some other handy indicators. For example, you've got the time of day, the current climate, and how much noise you're making shown in this little wave format. This stuff definitely comes in handy. For example, certain events in game are time critical. They might depend on the time of day or night. Weather itself plays a huge role in your adventure as well as the climate or temperature effects that Link will experience. These are things to note and will dictate considerations for things like clothing, health and more. As for the noise level, well, this ties in with another game mechanic which reflects stealth. Let's say you've got a really tough enemy and you kind of want to avoid them and get around them. Well, you can use a variety of tools at hand, maybe some items, clothing or food as an example. Of course, my favourite mechanic, the crouch walk, to minimise your noise, allowing you to sneak past a lot of the enemies you can find in the game. Beyond the heads up display or HUD, you've also got two key menus which can be triggered by the plus and minus buttons on your controller. Hit the minus button and you'll be taken to your adventure menu, and here you'll find a fuller version of the map, character bios and details, a quest log and compendium, which includes images taken in game with a device you'll earn soon after the tutorial. I want to avoid spoilers, but you need to know that Tears of the Kingdom's map has what I'd refer to as layers. Be mindful that certain markers act differently than in Breath of the Wild. You've got your typical coloured markers, the ones you can activate in first person, and they remain unchanged. They'll show up regardless of the map layer, but when we're talking about specific icon markers, you know, the things like the treasure icon or the skull icon, they're very much specific to the layer they are placed. So if you've lost that marker you set to remember a treasure you want to circle back on, you find it's on another layer of the map. The other key menu can be accessed by pressing the plus button on your controller, and this will gain access to things like weapons, clothing, food, and other key resources needed throughout your journey. Use your L and R triggers here to move between each section, and take note of the prompts at the bottom of the screen which are what we'd call context sensitive. In other words, they're specific to what you have highlighted. You can also use the in-game directional controls, and these are kind of shortcuts to the same sort of menus. Press up to access your items, right to access weapons, and left to access your shields. Highlighting the options here will allow you to act on the fly, and it saves a lot of time going in and out of menus ongoing. Finally, you have to know that there's a control section, which is one that I use more than I care to admit, and you've got the options section in the menu too. And this is perfect if you want to tailor your experience. You can find information here about things like amiibo, but also motion controls, sensitivity, even details about the map, whether you want to have it in a pro mode or not. Tears of the Kingdom features a lot of mechanics, customizations, and options, and it can be a little overwhelming at first, but the menus contain critical information and it's worth taking the time to get yourself across them. It's surprising how easy it is to miss something crucial. 
or how a simple little bit of information can make a huge difference in your journey. Okay, so you've started the game, you've gone through the opening moments, your jaws on the floor, and before too long you find yourself diving out into the sky. You've landed on a series of connected sky islands, but what now? Well, if you play Breath of the Wild, this area acts in a similar way to the Great Plateau. Essentially, the point of this section is to introduce you to the core gameplay mechanics and features the title has to offer, a tutorial of sorts, before expanding and opening the wider world and insane levels of exploration and customization available to your journey. My first tip here is to navigate towards the main activity marker on your map and start talking with the key characters and moving the story forward. Don't get me wrong, you'll definitely want to explore and I certainly did as well, but doing this will get you activating things called shrines which are located on the sky hub. In turn will provide the player with the core powers or abilities required to interact with the world at its fullest. These include the features you might have seen in the gameplay trailers such as Ultra Hand, Fuse, Ascend and Recall. The primary tools for Tears of the Kingdom and Nintendo's approach to what they call multiplicative gameplay. Verticality plays a huge role in Tears of the Kingdom, so being able to move Link around these sky islands can be really tricky if you don't know how to get from point A to point B, and I guarantee you it's a lot easier with the base set of abilities than trying some of the mad lad build solutions I was concocting on my first try. Next up is what we call here at Gamesmiths the ABCs. Always be collecting. Resources will always come in handy, and with no encumbrance limits for basic items like food, why not stuff your pockets full and keep your links stocked and buffed? It's worth noting that this particular area is somewhere you can return to after you move on. So don't sweat the small stuff if you feel like you've left part of the Sky Hub unexplored. Maybe you're challenged by a tough enemy who seems impossible to overcome. But don't worry about it, move on, build yourself up, and come back later when you're ready for some sweet revenge. Remember, this is your adventure and you can do it however you please. Whether you're progressing the story, completing a puzzle, or trying to overcome a major challenge, there really is no right or wrong when it comes to doing Zelda. It's your adventure and you should do it your way. Nintendo have excelled at providing a playground for you to customize your experience. It's amazing how often I hear people say they've overcome a challenge through a solution they thought was weird, definitely not intended, but worked for them regardless. See, that's not an accident though. Tears of the Kingdom gives players the tools to create multiple options and solutions to challenges in the game. So your imagination is your greatest asset here. Be it combat, stealth, speedrunning, glitches, any or all of the above, a combination of multiple solutions exist. And regardless of your approach, sharing the stories that come out of this game is indeed one of the greatest thrills you can experience and enjoy as part of a Zelda fan. We're into the good stuff now as we enter the final stretch. These tips coming straight from the Gamesmiths community for general play without any specific spoilers. Now, considering we're leveling up on the tips, I'm gonna reset the clock on the numbering. I don't think it means what you think it means. So we'll start off again at number one, this time courtesy of our good friend, Dan the Man. Tip number one, how to Dan the Man it. Multiplicative gameplay in action. In the words of the great King Boomy from Avatar The Last Airbender, Sometimes the best approach to a situation is to think like a mad genius. In Breath of the Wild, Dan blew my mind describing his approach to Zora's domain by using Cronus to ascend the waterfalls in Akala, instead of the usual lengthy combat approach most of us go. But in Tears of the Kingdom, it took Dan literally five minutes to once again train my brain differently, this time by refusing the old Ultra Hand based build in favour of shield surfing the rail to get from point A to point B awesome. Not one to rest on his laurels though, Dan has given myself and the Forge team more tips than I can count, including an array of shield based fusion solutions to nearly every situation you could face, making Dan the real MacGyver of Tears of the Kingdom when it comes to survival and a shield with whatever happens to be on hand. You've got the rock shield for defense and attack with parry, the bomb shield for an instant uplift to bullet time, and then we've got the wing shield. This one was kind of interesting as well. It gives you that higher vertical leap just in case you need it. And finally, one of my favorites is the minecart shield. For when you need to be rolling in style. Finally, Dan shared a top tip for instant elevation. When you're in a tight spot, simply use a fire arrow on a spicy pepper to create an instant updraft that'll get you airborne and on the go. 
I'm very lucky in that Dan provides a golden moment, a tip for everyone in the streams that I do on this channel, but if you'd like to know more about Dan, go check out his channel. I'll make sure it's in the description. You'd be well worth your while. And trust me, he's one to watch in the future. He's got a lot of capability and you never know what might come from Dan, but it's always something special. It's impossible to pick a favorite tip, but this one has to be amongst the top tier in terms of simplicity, genius, application, and most importantly, value. Simply gather a bunch of apples together, fuse them, and if you have access to a skill called auto build, you can add this creation to your favorites. The next time you're around an orchard or a collection of apples, simply activate your auto build and watch the collection go to work for you. What's even more genius about this tip is you don't even need to complete the build. You can actually cancel it by pressing the B button once the apples hover into place and they'll simply drop down into a nice neat little bundle ready for you to pick them up. No need to thank me because well, technically it's Keely who provided this life saving tip so thanks Keely. These next tips are easy to use but also worth adding to your arsenal. They also come courtesy of Keely. First up we've got Chef's Kiss and this is a tip to make sure that you keep your food stocked and look to cook a variety of different types of meals including vegetarian options. Aside from the many benefits that will help you tailor your solution as shown here, you'll also be prepared for what might be around the corner and keep your adventure on the hero's path. When it comes to crowd control and combat, Keely's advice has got you covered there too. Try gems for some powerful options in both offense and defense, but also don't underestimate the power of mushrooms. Like me, you probably forgot all about the puff shroom smokescreen from Ionum's gameplay trailer, but rightfully so, I guess. They don't have a strong use case when it's against one single construct. It's not the best sell of this tip you'll find, but trust me, when you find yourself in a crowd, and that option is definitely a lifesaver, immediately providing relief from the assault and allowing you to then go wild on the attack for maximum effect, or even sneak away to fight another day. There are a few people I trust as much as Big J, the man mountain from Valhalla who rocks the Mario better than the mustachioed meatball in a mushroom coin box. Without spoiling the prize at the end of this quest, let's just say you might want to consider following the adventure that surrounds Robbie and the chasms you get early on in the game. It'll end up with you following the lead of a certain set of statues, but do yourself a favour and consider coming equipped with a flower or ten, one particularly called a Sunderline, and you'll find those generally on the Sky Islands. It'll definitely come in handy as a cooked meal in this quest, and the storyline and reward are definitely top tier, especially early game. But for the love of Robbie, there's actually a part two as well to this tip. After you've completed that initial quest with Robbie, he'll have another mission for you that's definitely worth your time, and you can find him back at the main hub on Hyrule. Following his quest will activate some abilities for your Puripad, ones you'll definitely want. It might be a spoiler, so skip ahead a minute or so if you want to miss it. I'll give you a countdown, ready? Three, two, one. Cool. So basically completing this quest along with some minor related tasks will open up a set of features on your Sheikah Slate that were previously DLC or bonus features in Breath of the Wild. These include the Sheikah Sensor Plus option for tracking shrines and items, the Hero's Path ability to track your progress, but most importantly and definitely my favourite is the ability to earn the Travel Medallion. This is literally one of my favourite items allowing you to set a waypoint wherever you want, but it's even better you see there's actually more than one on offer. So keep yourself ahead of the pack by paying your respects to the Shrine of Robbie and set yourself up for being not just a courageous hero, but a tech savvy one to boot. Tip number eight is a hack where Big J proves he's living in the year 3000 by dropping the mic on the game mechanics and proving that rules don't exactly exist when you can see through the architecture of the Matrix. If you head out to Zora's Domain before the Gerudo region and accomplish the task laid out there for the main storyline, you'll gain the help of your old friend Sidon, which is no shock considering you've seen him in the trailers, but his water ability is extra handy. Sidon's command of the water in the region allows Link to effectively survive the extremes of the Gerudo Desert without requiring specific clothing or food perks you'd normally need for the job. You just need to time it exactly right, that's all. Always be collecting Zonite so you can keep your power charges up and full to capacity, and also so you can build whenever you want. Don't forget to save your Luminous Stones, your Construct, Captain and Sergeant parts as well. Next up, all I can say is if you need your tips served with a full helping of usefulness, hilarity, and a side of sweetness, then look no further than the OG skater boy from Philly, Mr. Boy Prodigy X. 
Always good for a laugh or an encouraging word. Boypro GX is the linchpin of Team Stream here at Gamesmiths and BP export the goods to live stream. Tip number 10 and direct from him was about Addison's add-on I'd call it. So if you'd prefer more dollars instead of a meal as a reward from Addison, the sign guy, make sure you have a full meal pouch and he'll give you 20 more rupees instead. Tip number 11 is to rock the dragon. You see the dragon's movement paths are totally different than they were in Breath of the Wild but they do have a constant cycle split between the sky and the depths. No amount of sleep will reset their positions. Down in the dark depths it can indeed be a difficult time, but don't worry, you can keep your weapons in tip top shape by planning ahead. You may have noticed these ghost soldiers in the depths and they have pristine weapons, but they can only be given to you if you've already broken the corrupted counterpart. So make sure you smash those gloomy time wasters and go from zero to hero with the shiny new blade courtesy of the Gerudo Ghost Soldiers. BPX also was part of another tip that we've got, and this involves a friend of the channel as well, Dragonlord Cedric, so shout out to you, Dragonlord. This one is what I'd like to call the OP Octo Weapons. So what we have here is a situation where if you want to get yourself a really valuable top tier weapon, you need to head out to find an Octorok, one in the Elden region typically. And we're talking about the ones that have that sort of vacuum type ability where they'll suck up the weapon if you put it down on the ground or put it near them. What will happen is they'll take in your decayed weapon. After a moment, the Octorok will spit the weapon back out, similar to how they did in Breath of the Wild. But instead of just being shiny, this one will also come back with a new ability or perk. In fact, they'll be different depending on the Octorok or day, so you can actually save the game before you do it. And depending on what comes back, you might want to retry and reload to essentially what's called quote unquote save scumming. But it's a cool idea if you want to make sure you get yourself powered up or if you're in need of a strong weapon for a particularly difficult enemy. But worth taking note, it can only happen with one Octorok per Blood Moon, so make sure you make it count. Next up, we've got a good friend of the channel, Cat. Cat's challenge is a tip but also one that's designed to make sure you're having fun. See, hers is about Addison as well, but it's about trying to keep that sign up with as dodgy an effort as possible, because sometimes that's a little bit more fun than doing the job properly. Uh, Kat's been doing all sorts of strange things with it. One of them's involving using rocks at different combinations, but apparently she's come up with some pretty sick ideas for it. So that's the challenge. Try to find a way to hold that sign up with as little effort as possible, or maybe just enough just to get by with the quest. But another tip that definitely comes from Kat, and it's one that her and I have been doing being Aussies together, is we've actually been trying to share our playthrough at the same time. You see, we might live in different places and maybe you have different schedules and different work lives, but having someone to bounce the game off and sort of keep you motivated and be excited about is really cool if you don't have friends nearby that are playing the game. So have someone to play along with, just like I've got with Kat. This one comes courtesy of a friend of ours, Wiz Catches Lightning, and it's all about the hover bike. In fact, it's called the Precision Build. I've heard a lot of different variations of a hover bike out there, but as it goes, this one is meant to be the most efficient model going. Now, I'll make sure I pop some details on the screen because I don't want to mix the words and I certainly didn't manage to complete this myself quite accurately in the live stream. But it was such a good idea and I managed to actually get an extension of that, adapting my own version by putting a third fan on creating myself a tri bike and it has all the same power of the hover bike with the added benefit of feeling a little more balanced if you follow me and finally there's just some last minute tips from me in general the first tip comes courtesy of mrs smith herself hover over the zone eye dispenser icons on the map and it will show you a breakdown of what items you can expect out of that particular dispenser it's worth noting that you get different items from different dispensers and this tip can save you a lot of zone eye charges and heartache when you're looking for a specific item. Putting pins on the map is a good way to make sure you keep track of where you're going, but you don't want it to be too cluttered as well. However, sometimes you might want to get creative with your map markers. For example, I like to leave myself little reminders, often considered to be a little bit dicey on the streams, but let's just say, I never forget what happens at 4 p.m. or that I have to head back to see a certain animal do poops ladder. It's critical stuff and I'm not missing a thing. But finally, I think this is probably the best tip I can give you. It's a beautiful game, so take the time to stop and smell the roses. I personally enjoy just picking a nice spot occasionally and watching the world go by, just like I did in Breath of the Wild. Whether it's watching the small birds play, maybe it's a fox walking through the snow, 
could be bokoblins living their best lives or just the movement day to night as the sun sets over the wondrous world of Hyrule. The game is gorgeous and it's an absolute treat just to enjoy the atmosphere and soak in this wonderful fantasy world that Nintendo have created for us to spend time in. And trust me, you never have a minute wasted when you love what you do. But to Team Smiths, my wife and my daughter, Keely, Dan the Man, Boy Prodigy X, Cat, Big J, Wiz, Minder Man, Mystery of the Mysterious, Dragon Cedric, Different Leafy, Damalofio, <laughs> I think I got that right, Xander, Mabro, Jordan, Mama, Ozgame Collector, Highly Unlikely and Highly Unwifely, uh, Ren, It's Storming, OGF Gaming, Kamau, Rook and everyone else over at Discord. Thanks for your input on this epic event in such a short time. And to everyone out there who keeps the Zelda love burning on the daily. Couldn't do it without you. So I really hope you got something out of today's video and you can expect more Tears of the Kingdom content coming soon. Theories are inbound, I've got one on the go at the moment, but in terms of the larger theories, that's kind of on hold until I finish the storyline and that's a work in progress for me. If you're interested or if you've taken note, I've been streaming my playthroughs via the Take My Strong Hand series here on YouTube, featuring what I'd consider to be extraordinary normal levels of technical skill. That's probably actually overshooting, but lots of fun, thanks to good friends and community involvement that keep the chat interesting and hilarious. Finally, in the next week or so, you're going to see some different content hitting the channel, maybe even as we speak. I'm trying out some different things to see what you might like and what you don't. And also, what provides the best mechanism for us to keep talking about Zelda well into the future. Believe it or not, we're actually nearly coming up on two years here of Gamesmith's channel, and I sincerely want to say a huge thank you. Each and every one of you have made this journey something truly special. It's meant a lot, and each of you were truly amazing. I really mean that, as always. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, a like goes a long way. It's always appreciated. Stay safe, have fun on your adventures, and just keep being amazing. We'll see you next time, here on Gamesmiths. Okay, watch this tip. Don't do ultra or anything like that, right? It's raining, but you know what? You want it not to rain because you want to start a fire. So you just, you know, maybe. <laughs> Are you making this up as you go along? Well, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit making it up. No, it's just got to fuse to something, right? If it does, we're in business. Wait. It will, it'll work. No, I did I did it. I did it the other day with something. And I... I did the fire over there under the cover? No, I no, I'm going to make my own cover. I'm the Bush Tucker Man. Live version. You know what? But if I did that... You know what? It's only because everyone's watching, right? If I was by my, when I was by myself, I did this first time like a champion. And I was like, that would be a great tip and trick. And then, yep, look at this, now, just created myself a lean-to. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Boom. Wow. So anyway, if it was still you raining, if, if it was still raining, you'd have no problems now, because I could have made a fire. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you make it though, the rain stops. So Bush Tucker good. Man. No, you see, Cat gets it. Yeah. Cat yeah, gets it. Yeah, that, yeah. That's how we live in the. Yeah. That's how we live out that's here in Australia. Do. Yep. So what Keely's saying there is, you might be a bit more like the Liam Neeson of the, the cooking world, where you need to have a particular set of skills uh, in order to be taken to a place with another set of particular skills. You get where I'm coming from, right? Like cook different types of foods, and I'm all about cooking, as you can see here. Love it. Love cooking some food, and it's going to pay off dividends right now because chili, not a problem. Not for me anymore. Just have a bit of food, and off we're good. Good to go. So, cook food, lots of different foods and abilities. And the the key call out there, I think, get it, Keely? Key, Keely? Anyway, um, was. That's a joke, brother. I know you're out there, I can hear you typing. Um, <laughs> wait for this next one, I'm going to do three and up my auto build capacities. Oh yeah, the golden apple was that through through the spanner in the situation, but oh, I did no, but <laughs> I 
can't even climb a tree. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> no wonder we had some technical problems. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's been a bit of a week. <laughs> I can't even collect this apple. Look, I'm just going to shoot it out the tree for now. Just because I, I really, I just don't want <laughs> just don't want to miss it. Just move on. Yeah. <laughs> Riveting gameplay. Look. Have you been through all your teeth? Have I been? No. I'm. I'm trying. I'm trying to execute basics of. Uh... Hey, hey, BBX. Hey. No, it's just an arrow. It's a normal arrow. Oh, well, look at that. Look at the updraft. Oh, oh, for days. Wait. Wait, project. Watch this. Like I nearly did, I did it once. <laughs> I did it once, man. Like I did it once. I pulled that wing. I think I've, oh. I think I've lost about 20 birds, but. How are you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like always. No, you should, you should see earlier, mate. I, I think I, I, th I think I threw 20 of them out. <laughs> Top tips over here. Yep. <sighs> Backflip. <laughs> Wait. Watch this one, BPX. Ready? I didn't know this one. This is Keely. Ready? Fast food. This one's called fast food. Yeah, you're welcome. F said Keely, because it was her tip.